the flux produced by the winding it depends on the mmf that is magnetomotive force which is the product of current and the number of turns of the winding through which current is passing so flux can be changed either by changing the current by adding an resistance or by changing the number of turns of the winding okay so first method is the flux control method now various uh, flux control methods there are uh, one is uh, first is field diverter method second is armature diverter method third is tapped field method and fourth is series parallel connection of field so these four methods are there under this flux control method so let us see one by one in detail so first method is the field divider method or field diverter method okay now uh, this is the diagram for this as its name indicate field divider or field diverter method the field winding current is diverted through a resistance so here the across field winding one resistance is connected rx so that the current flowing through this series winding um, series field winding will be diverted to this rx okay so in this method the series field winding is shunted by a variable resistance rx known as the field diverter the arrangement is as shown in this uh, particular figure so due to the parallel path of rx due to this parallel path of rx by adjusting the <coughs> value of rx any amount of current can be diverted through the diverter hence the current through the field winding can be adjusted as per the requirement due to this the flux gets controlled and hence the speed of the motor gets controlled so by this method the speed of the motor can be controlled above the rated speed then the speed armature characteristics with the change in rx is shown in this particular figure this is speed on y axis armature current on x axis without rx is this characteristics and as you are increase uh, decreasing the value of rx so these characteristics will shift further okay so i hope uh, you have understood uh, this first method in second method in this uh, flux controlled by the field diverter method so we have connected uh, resistance rx across this field winding so that the field current will be diverted through this now in next method we are diverting that current of armature winding so armature across this armature winding we have connected this diverter uh, resistance okay so that the current flowing through this armature winding will be diverted through this rx okay so this method is used for the motor which require constant load torque so um, uh, this is the typical application of this type of uh, diverter so which uh, requires constant load torque okay so the armature of this uh, motor is shunted with an external uh, resistance rx as shown in this particular figure now the resistance rx is called as armature diverter as it is diverting the current of armature any amount of armature current can be diverted through the diverter by adjusting the value of this resistance and due to this armature current reduces but we know that as torque is directly proportional to phi into i and the load torque is constant the flux is to be increased in order to maintain the torque 
uh, if we are reducing the value of i a phi we want to increase so motor reacts by drawing more current from the supply so the current through field winding increases so flux increases and speed of the motor reduces and this method is used to control the speed below the normal or rated value so this method is used to control the uh, speed below the rated value so as in uh, shunt motor also uh, when you are controlling the armature control current or voltage then your uh, speed will be below control below rated value if you are controlling the current or voltage of this or flux of the field winding then you are increasing uh, the speed or you are controlling the speed beyond the rated value okay so these are the two methods i hope you have understood this third method is the tap field method so in this method the flux change is achieved by changing the number of turns in the field winding so this is the um, switch which you can change its position from 1 to 2 or 3 or 4 or this position so that whenever it is in position 1 all the entire field winding is uh, there in series and when it is moving to position 2 then this part of field winding will be detached and only this much portion will be in series if this position this switch is at position 3 these two parts will be detached and only these windings will be in series and so on so forth okay so the field winding is provided with the taps as shown in the figure and a selector switch s it is provided to select the number of turns or taps as per the requirement when the switch s is in position 1 the entire field winding is in the circuit and motor runs with the normal or rated speed as the switch is moved from position 1 to 2 or 3 or 4 or onwards the number of turns of the field winding in the circuit decreases and due to this the mmf required to produce the flux decreases and due to this flux produce decreasing a decreasing flux produced the speed will increase okay above the rated value and this method is often used in electric traction okay so i hope you understood this method also so we'll go for the last method of flux control that is series parallel connection of field winding so as its name indicates series parallel connection of field method so field winding it is additional uh, means uh, it is divided in two parts and two uh, parts are connected in series whereas here they are connected in parallel okay that is the only difference because the uh, field winding is in series with the armature but that portion we have subdivided and connected in series and the portion we have subdivided and connected in parallel so as its name indicate so these are the two uh, this is uh, two diagrams showing this is series um, uh, winding uh, connection and this is parallel uh, connection of field winding okay so in this method the field coil is divided into various parts these parts can be connected in series or parallel as per the requirement so these figures shows the two parts of field windings they are connected in series and parallel okay for the same torque if the field coil is arranged in series or parallel the mmf produced by the coil changes hence the flux produced also changes hence speed can be controlled so some fixed speeds only can be obtained by this method depending on 
the number of windings you are breaking into so if uh, in series if there are three windings then three different speeds if in three parallel then three different speeds can be achieved okay so in parallel grouping the mmf produced decreases hence higher speed can be obtained by parallel grouping okay this method is generally used in case of fan motors so i hope you have understood this flux control method and all the advantages and drawbacks of flux control method in uh, case of uh, shunt uh, motor they are applicable in series motor also so next is the rheostatic control all the advantage and disadvantage of rheostatic control methods are also same as well as the applied voltage control all three methods they are having advantages and disadvantages same as in uh, shunt as well as in series type of uh, motors okay now second is the rheostatic control method so in this method a variable resistance rx is inserted in series with the motor circuit so in series with the motor circuit they are uh, their uh, uh, insertion of this rx is there okay so uh, at, as this resistance is increased the voltage drop across this resistance that is ia into rx it increases and this reduces the voltage applied across the armature okay as speed is directly proportional to the voltage applied across armature the speed reduces as the applied voltage reduces then this is the arrangement shown in figure as entire current passes through rx there is a large power drop or power loss across this resistance and the speed current characteristics is shown over here so this is with rx and this is without rx okay so i hope you understood this method also and the uh, last method is the applied voltage control method so in applied voltage control method a series motor is this is the series motor which is excited by the voltage obtained by a series generator the, this is the series generator and this generator is um, its shaft is rotated by a prime mover so this prime mover is shown this is a series generator the emf developed by this series generator is applied as the voltage for this um, series motor so this is motor this is generator so this is the arrangement uh, shown over here the generator is driven by the suitable prime mover the voltage obtained from the generator is controlled by the field divider uh, resistance connected across series field winding of the generator now as generated emf eg it is proportional to flux phi the flux change is achieved which gives the variable voltage at the output terminals and this due to this change in the supply voltage because this variable voltage we are applying as the supply for this motor okay so due to the change in this supply voltage various speeds of dc series motor can be obtained okay so i hope you understood this method also and all the advantages of all three methods remain same for dc series as well as shunt motors okay now one last method is there for the speed control of separately excited dc motor so if the uh, field winding it is separately excited or it is separately connected to the uh, supply instead of connecting in series or parallel um, series or shunt to the uh, armature winding it is directly connected to the supply that is referred as separately excited dc motor okay so um, uh, 
there is a, a system referred as ward leonard system and in which this uh, motor now means for all these motor and generator set uh, the field winding it is directly connected to supply so that it is separately excited here also field winding is connected directly to the supply okay and then the supply is connected to this particular motor and this is the prime mover so this motor will rotate in turn it will rotate the shaft of this generator and it will produce a variable voltage over here and that variable voltage is applied here so that the speed of this motor will be controlled okay so this is in general explanation i'll explain it uh, uh, step by step listen carefully so when it is desired to have a wide and very sensitive speed control then this system is more generally used okay and the arrangement is shown in the figure so here m1 is the main motor whose speed control is required the field winding of this motor is permanently connected to the dc supply whereas the armature is connected to the variable voltage generated by this generator and due to this variable voltage this motor can be run at any desired speed now to provide this variable voltage a motor generator set so this mg set <coughs> is used it consists of either ac or dc motor directly connect uh, coupled to a generator this motor runs approximately at a constant speed and the output of generator g is fed to the motor m1 okay the field circuit of this generator is again a separately excited from the available dc supply through the reversing switch and a potential divider so that its excitation can be varied from zero to maximum in both the directions thus the generator output voltage will be varied from zero to maximum value by reversing the direction of the field current in g so by reversing the um, direction of field current with the help of reversing switch polarity of the generated voltage will be reversed and thus change in the direction of this motor m1 will also be achieved as as this method can give ulti unlimited speed control in either direction this system is commonly employed for elevators hoists and main drive in steel mills also this system is ideal for the applications where frequent starting stopping and reversals are required as the generator voltage generator voltage can be reversed gradually from zero can be raised gradually from zero the motor starts up smoothly without any extra starting equipment required okay although this system is advantageous as it is giving wide range of speeds it requires two extra machines so which requires a uh, high initial cost in modern days scrs are used for obtaining the variable dc voltage which will be uh, which will be taking power from ac mains through a transformer and though this system is expensive the arrangement is neat and free from maintenance problems and <coughs> there won't be a requirement of this mg set okay so this will give automatic control of the speed the modified ward leonard system 
is called as ward lenar igner system so in which flywheel is used in addition to the motor generator seat okay so it's of uh, no use will uh, when the load on this motor is suddenly increased the driving motor m2 from the motor generator seat slows down thus the inertia of flywheel is used to supply part of the overload however when the load is suddenly decreased from motor m1 then the motor m2 from the set speeds up which allows energy to store in the flywheel so that is um, not required here you can explain this only Uh, mg set and variable uh, speed motor of this and that's all so i hope we have covered this uh, speed control methods and uh, time is running out so we'll stop here uh, for uh, today thank you bye good day and take care